As a clinician, you are responsible for all aspects of training of your clients. This includes setting up protocols, making sure they're appropriate, providing them to your trainees, and also ensuring that they uh, proceed as, as uh, you wish them to. We've received many requests from our clinicians to provide software capabilities that make it easier and more effective for this to be done, and we're going to review those with you. Uh, these include the fact that there's a special clinical login now that you'll use when you start the BrainMaster software and that your clients will not use this clinical login. What we provide is what we call the session librarian and this is a software capability for packaging up your folders, providing them to clients on floppy disk or email or a related method and allowing them to unpack these folders and use them in a very convenient manner. This is being done to empower clinicians to be in control of biofeedback training remotely, whether it's done uh, at a home or a school or an office, and without relying on special internet connections or telephone connections, for example. Uh, you will be enabling your clients to run sessions uh, only under your authorization, and this will be part of your professional services. Uh, and there will of you will, of course, be able to uh, be charging a fee for these professional services in managing their biofeedback. This is the home screen when uh, a, a user starts the program. In its basic mode, you'll see, for example, that this View or Change Settings button is not enabled. There's no way for the user to view or change any of the settings. In addition, under the Folder Selections pop-up, you'll see that the Create New Folder button is not enabled. So there's no way for a basic user to create a new folder either. These are functions that are reserved for clinicians. In order to gain access to these functions, you'll log in as a clinician. And when I push Login, you'll get the login screen. And in this case, you'll put in the ID number, which you've been assigned. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'll just type the word clinical, and I'll type in a password. This is also a good time to put in your name and email. The system will remember this once you've done it once. For example, I can type my name and our email address and press OK. Now it says Login Approved for Clinical. When I hit OK, you'll see that View and Change Settings button is now enabled. It's possible to get at these. In addition, under folder selections, it's possible to create a new folder. Now we'll demonstrate how to create a new folder for a trainee. Typically, you'll use a folder for any given trainee and for any protocol they use. So, for example, if you have a trainee with two protocols, you'll create two folders for them. Let's create one. We press Create New Folder, and we can put in the name now. We'll put in John Miller. And what we see is that the software has already picked an ID for us, in this case the first four letters of the last name followed by the first four letters of the first name. This is a good time to simply click into this box, backspace over the last letter, and I like to put in a 1, indicating that this is the first folder we're going to use for this client. We then have a comment area, and what I'll say, for example, is John Miller, low beta training on C4. Any informative information can be put into this box, this comment. We then press OK, and now we see that we have a confirm box to confirm the name, the ID, and the comment, and we press OK. We now get a pop-up which lets us select a settings file to provide the initial settings for this new folder. These settings can all be changed uh, before or um, during the, um, the training, uh, but we'll pick a standard one now called Focus. Focus is low beta up and theta down, so that's appropriate for this type of folder, and we press OK. Now we see all of the settings for this folder spelled out. This is an opportunity to review them and to make changes if necessary. Alternatively, if they're all acceptable just as is, we simply go to use these settings, and we get a pop-up that asks if we want to print this settings file, and we'll say yes and the file will then be sent to my Windows printer. Printing has begun and now we see that the current trainee study folder is John Miller, low beta on C4. We're ready to begin session one and 40 sessions have been made available as the uh, standard default. And at this time 
the uh, folder is ready for use. Now we're going to review how to look at and change the settings for any trainee folder. There's a large variety of options and we'll go through these uh, one at a time. We previously set up the folder John Miller for low beta training on C4 and this is our current folder. So we'll now click view or change settings. This brings up the pop-up dialog that describes all the settings for this folder and with the push buttons on the left it's possible to make any changes we like and to save those changes. Let's review them one at a time. At the very top we have read write settings file. This is optional for your use. It does not have to be used. And when I pop it up, what it allows me to do is to create files with settings. The first thing we see on the left is the standard settings files that were provided when we opened this folder. Alert, Deep, Deep2, Focus, and other folders are available, some of which are built-ins. It's possible to create a new settings file by using this push button. We can save settings to the currently selected file using this push button. And it's possible to read in settings from a selected file using this push button. So this pop-up gives us a simple uh, settings uh, storage function uh, for convenience purposes.